but I want to talk about bottom feeder. So we'll look at bottom feeder on Coinbase. So just kind of give you guys an update on uh, the only uh, reversal system that I've run. All right. So this is with uh, conservative uh, take profit settings here. Uh, we can switch this up and get some pull some more profit out of this uh, out of uh, if we want. Uh, but overall, looking at uh, how bottom feeder has performed uh, in 2020, uh, just so this is just from 2020. This is from January 2020. Uh, I've had 13 total closed trades, uh, 11 winning trades, two losing trades. Okay. Now, obviously, this is uh, part of that is just back testing. That's not live data because uh, bottom feeder wasn't published until this month. Um, so we've experienced. Uh, let's see here. Uh, one one positive trade. Uh, I believe it does count each individual as a trade, though. So it's taking the multiple positions, right? So it's counting each position, even though they're DCA averaged positions. But uh, we've seen one sequence win, one sequence loss, right? Uh, we've seen one sequence win, one sequence win. And currently, uh, bottom feeder did signal on yesterday's close as well. Okay, yesterday's close as well. Uh, again, pulling for that take profit of 60.50. Pulling for that take profit of 60.50, okay? Um, or excuse me, did not signal on, on today's daily close. Signaled on yesterday's daily close. So you would have bought the close of this candle, the open of this candle. So again, uh, and I know that Jason is in this trade, actually. Uh, junior analyst Jason is in this trade as well. Uh, average entry of it, it should be around 53.31 uh, on the open of this current candle, close of this candle right here. I'd have to double check his sheet. So uh, we've seen one winning bottom feeder trade, one losing trade, and one winning trade. And really the cool thing about bottom feeder is this is really what um, you know, my members have been asking uh, for a long time, right? How do we, um, you know, hedging is great, uh, but if we're looking to maximize yield, how do we know when we can uh, begin averaging out of a bottom, uh, you know, averaging out of a hedge after prices move significantly to the downside, right? And bottom feeder does that, right? Because here's the thing. Um, if you hedge appropriately uh, with your hedging strategy as we teach, right? Closing below the baseline hedge. Uh, if you hedge appropriately, then your funds are protected, right? And what we've learned very, very clearly uh, is that with a bottom feeder signal, we do not unhedge, right? The downside risk is far greater than the potential upside, right? And we always want to operate through the lens of managing risk, okay? We always want to look through the lens of operating risk. Uh, and as we can see, uh, unfortunately, and again, myself having a portion of my long exposure that got uh, got hit on this movement to the downside, you know, these are things where we want to be managing our risk, right? Because again, the downside risk is greater than the potential upside, right? So as traders, and I say this all the time, you know, your goal should not be to make money. Your goal should be to trade well and follow your system, right? If you trade that way, you will get money. You will make money. If you trade to make money, you will make mistakes because you're being greedy. You're trading from a level of greed. So again, uh, it is the addition of this to a proper hedging strategy that really unlocks its full potential, right? Because the nice thing is, right? So let's think about this. If one who hedged appropriately, utilizing the baseline, I would have been hedged back here on the 15th of February, okay? And would have taken a bottom feeder signal here that was successful and would have rehedged that profit on successful trade close. Uh, would have rehedged right here the portion of profit that was won from the bottom feeder trade, basically buying the top. And this was the movement that we shorted. We did short uh, the reversal baseline bounce. But regardless, it was it would have also been a bottom feeder trade. Okay? It would have also been a bottom feeder trade. Uh, so again, would have been hedged throughout all this. We can see here we're bottom feeder signals on three subsequent candles here, here, and here. Uh, and then we have a successful trade here. One would short again from 89.55 right? Or, or add that profit to their hedge. And again, the nice thing about positioning for a bottom feeder trade, and I want to explain the math behind this, uh, there's nothing wrong with taking a long and a short at the same time. If you're hedged, so let's say that you're utilizing uh, an account like Bybit, which is what I utilize for my hedging, and you are using 3x leverage, you're keeping the majority of your funds in cold storage, and you're hedging your long exposure with uh, 3x leverage or 2x leverage, and you're putting 50% of your funds on there. Again, you're doing your best to reduce counterparty risk, right? You get a bottom feeder trade, right? Well, either on the same account, what you can do is you can calculate your position size and all you have to do, you can do two things, right? You can have a separate account where you go long only and that's fine. A lot of people will choose to do that. But the other thing that you can do is understand, remember you're holding Bitcoin on the exchange, that's Bitcoin that's spot long. And if you don't have a short that's hedging it, you're not flat, you're, you're spot long, right? So if price goes down, you lose dollars, you don't lose Bitcoin. If price goes up, you make money, you don't gain more, you get Bitcoin, right? All you have to do is take profit or realize loss in Bitcoin terms on your short hedge. Okay. So let's say that you have, 
ten thousand dollars to hedge okay and you have a ten so you deposit uh let's say you let's keep it simple let's say you're using 2x leverage very conservative so you deposit five thousand dollars worth of bitcoin to buy bit and you take a ten thousand dollar short position with 2x leverage to hedge your ten thousand dollars worth of underlying bitcoin right you only need five thousand dollars on the exchange you've got the other five thousand dollars worth of bitcoin trading on binance or ftx or in your cold storage wallet wherever you have it right doesn't matter and um uh, and yeah, Bybit's adding a lot of cool features, man. Yeah, definitely check out Ben Bybit's uh, Twitter post. They are adding a lot of really neat stuff over there. And they've already added USDT. So you don't even have to hedge. You can just sit in USDT. Uh, hedge does offer uh, higher risk um, and higher reward. Okay. So all you have to do is take profit on your short hedge when you get a bottom feeder signal. Because if you've hedged, bottom feeder only signals at bottoms, right? Relatively local bottoms. Because uh, it only signals when prices in a particular, you know, situation, and those tend to be bottoms. That's why we call it bottom feeder. Uh, so again, let's say that your position size for the bottom feeder long trade is a thousand dollars. All you have to do is you have a five thousand dollar short. You limit buy one thousand contracts, making your short position four thousand contracts. Right? Okay. Now, as price goes up, your dollar value will also go up because you have Bitcoin that is not hedged, so it is appreciating. Remember, when you're hedged and price goes up, you don't make extra dollars. Remember that? This is what hedging is. You're hedging your USD value. So we can see the successful completion of that trade once it, it hits its take profit. So at that point, you would go into your assets tab, look at how much money you have on there. It will likely be more than $5,000. So let's say it's 5,200, you made $200 profit. So then you go in and you add your $1,000 hedge back on plus the $200 profit. So you rehedge 1,200 bucks. Right, so you've made $200 and now you have $10,200 in total equity that is now hedged, right? And then you just repeat, you rinse, wash and repeat. And the cool thing is since bottom feeder will average you into a position, since bottom feeder will average you, you into a position, if you're at a local low, you will slowly begin removing your hedge, right? Now there is one caveat to this and this will protect you from situations like this where you have uh, equity that is not hedged and you hit your stop loss and price con continues to move significantly lower. So I don't set stop losses on Bybit with the uh, pencil feature where you set an automatic stop loss for the trade because that uses last price by default. I, I like to use mark price for my stop losses um, and I use conditional stop orders to set my stop losses. So all you have to do is set the underlying equity amount that you've unhedged. So in this case, what will be $1,000, right? Uh, and you should know what your loss is. Right, you should know what your loss is at the stop loss. So uh, again, Quadrigo tells you this. Uh, so let's pull up Quadrigo, for example, while we're here. Our position size calculator tells you this. You should know what your loss is per trade. So at one percent risk, it's going to be one percent of your account. So let's pull open uh, Quadrigo ATR, and Quadrigo ATR will tell you what your risk is. So right here, uh, Quadrigo ATR defaults to uh, five thousand dollars equity. You can adjust that as necessary, and your risk percentage right here. So it'll tell you at the stop loss, you're losing this much, man, hundred bucks. So, okay. So let's say you have a thousand dollar position size. Well, you just subtract the $100 loss. So that's $900, $900. You want to rehedge at the stop loss, right? So in, uh, on top of adding a stop loss for the trade, for the position size, you also add in, uh, you, add, you can increase the stop loss amount. You can set a conditional market order for probably the easiest way, uh, is to just set an additional stop market order for $900. So to make sure you get stopped out of the trade and you want to use close on trigger for that. That's why you want to set a second trade. You want to add another stop market order that's not close on trigger that will market short you uh, your $900 that you need to be hedged up, right? Uh, and in the event, I want to talk about this. Remember that if you end up rehedging, so let's talk about right now. So let's talk about bottom feeder right now. So we can see here for bottom feeder that we have a current take profit target of 6,050 for the bottom feeder uh, system, right? So bottom feeder is suggesting that we're going to go to 6050. It's in an active trade, right? Uh, it already bought, uh, it already bought on this candle close right here, bought this bottom, took profit here. Uh, it bought here and it bought here, took profit on those two trades right here. Uh, and then, uh, did its last buy with the first position, uh, this morning at the open of today's daily candle at 5039, right? Uh, so it's expecting price to move to 6050, right? Uh, let's say that, uh, as a result of that, you've pulled off 20% of your hedge. And price moves up and you rehedge that money. Uh, and then price continues to move up, i.e. you're losing Bitcoin. Well, when we close above the baseline, remember, if you're hedging appropriately, so if you start correctly now today, hedging properly, right? 
then you're not incurring loss. You're not losing Bitcoin. You are giving back Bitcoin because you took profit down here on a short that you should not have necessarily taken profit on because you're supposed to close your hedge out when price closes above the baseline, right? So again, the math works out. You make more money in the long run by hedging and taking the long position at the same time. And you can do this by either hedging on one account and going long on another or by just reducing the amount of your hedge. And if it ends up being that you end up getting uh, multiple subsequent bottom feeder signals, what will happen is you will slowly and slowly and slowly remove your hedge until you really pack a punch on your move into the upside, right? And you just keep your max risk at whatever your allowed risk tolerance is, right? So just keep in mind, the bottom feeder will on average signal two to three times. It has historically signaled up to nine times the most, uh, and and six times is the second most, right? And only those two times. So about two to three times on average. So again, if your mass, max risk is 3%, you can do 1% risk per, per signal on average, right? And then just say, well, no more. If it averages me in the more, I'll take the loss and then I'll just average into the new trades, right? And remember the key factors here of adding the stop loss, uh, adding the additional amount to be, be rehedged to the stop loss as a non-close on trigger trade. Uh, and at your take profit, adding the amount to rehedge plus profit there too. You can also set a stop market short trade at the take profit as well. So not just the take profit limit, but also the stop market order to rehedge you immediately, right? So you can do this all in advance. You can let the trade play out the way that it's supposed to, to and you can go to bed not having to worry about a candle like this, right? So the correct way to utilize bottom feeder and hedging together beautifully.